All right, you know what it is. It's the Quick Silver Show. With Dominique the Diva, and of course today, very special guest that we're so excited to talk to today, Monica <laughs> Denise. Hi. Hi. We're going to call her the thing. I'm just mama today. I got one with strep throat, so we are not moving. Mm, mm, mm. I know um, that's right. We can relate personally because, like I mentioned, uh, of course, our, our kids are home because of the whole COVID, so it's virtual learning right now. Um, it's not easy, Monica. I'm not going to sit here and, and lie and, and act like we got this all figured out. Between me and my wife, Ashley, who's your bestie, mm -hmm. we are uh, we struggling with this, this virtual learning thing. Listen, we going? did it for as long as we could, and my son that's in high school, he wanted to continue, but... My middle school son, that's he's an athlete through and through. So it was really changing his complete way of life. So I'm fortunate they're in a school that's small enough. They right. keep them socially distanced all day. And mm. um, now, but now everything's different. There's no lunchtime. Right. You know, they have to yeah. eat at their desk where the plexi is, or there's no, um, there's just none of the things that, that, we kind of grew up enjoying like it was almost like part of your social yeah. life mm -hmm. but i think it is it, it worked out good for my kids to kind of get some activity and go back just a little bit yeah yeah they need to see their friends and interactions it's, and stuff. it's been different it's been different and yeah like i said diva you're, you're lucky because you have a one-year-old so you, you, like you're not dealing with it like these problems when i say the moms and dads we're not okay like we're not okay. Like this is no, but serious. With my one year old, <laughs> he said we're not okay. I'm not. Check on him. Check <laughs> with on my one year old, you know, even though they're not going to school, you know, new mom jitters. Like I'm already a germaphobe, so it's just like I don't want him touching anything. I don't want people around. Oh, if around you're a germaphobe, him. you you may yeah. as well just get ready. I don't know if you need to do some type of therapy. Go roll in the Maybe. dirt first, because that's <laughs> what it's like, especially yeah. with boys and girl. My my yeah. middle son. Mm -hmm. He is like walking, like just everything. He broke his nose. He broke oh, um, no, his that's arm. What I was like, he did. Yes. And he I literally broke his nose and came night. in and was like, I think I need a doctor. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at him and blood is pouring. And I'm like, you think? I don't but, know what I'm going to do. Yeah, good luck. I am going to do with that. Good, right? luck. good luck with that. Good luck. That's a good luck. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about music real quick because we know you wear many hats. We know you're a mom. We know uh, what you've mom. done. A fun time mom. We know what you've done in this industry for the last two decades or so, and you're still talking about first time experiences, like you working yeah. with the Neptunes on trenches for the first time, and having my favorite rapper right now, Lil Baby, on it, which is just like a cheat code because he's on fire right now. But how was it? How is it experiencing first time, even being Monica? I mean, I, I really feel like the business is full of firsts because things are constantly changing. Every time you turn around, something's different. Like just becoming more accustomed to the digital age or the wave. Mm -hmm. Or when people ask me, well, have you ever? And I'm thinking to myself, wow, it didn't happen in people's minds if it's not been documented on social. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. Everything's different. So I'm, it's full of firsts. But working with the Neptunes was, it was a dream come true because when I was younger, we would see each other in passing. Right. And, you know, they're from Virginia, just like Missy, just like Timberland, just like, like you, know, you know. So I'm from I'm VA. Like, <laughs> we would be around, but never actually work. So to go there and then to see that they got me and they were still interested in the art of music, they were still interested in actually creating records and they were still interested in actually um, creating a sound Mm -hmm. that wasn't stock it didn't just come out of a backpack you know sometimes that's the mm -hmm. way it goes people yeah. pull something out the backpack and if it's good you you make it they your did. own yeah but this was us working day in day out sometimes you know a couple records a night and having almost like writing happening between every one of us and that's how we even named trenches got you of course your single, your single trenches right now we're definitely planning on the show uh, you definitely got the Quicksilver and Dominique Diva stamp on trenches. Um, but when you, you have a, a title like trenches, why trenches for Monica? Why, why that title? Because I've been in them so many times. Um, tr the trenches for me, it can be an emotional state or an actual place. Absolutely. And I, I always say that, you know, the assumption that when one has a lot, they go through nothing is actually the opposite. You know, I'm in the I'm in the trenches right now. I have 
my daughter's sick. So that means I can't see my father who just um, became a double amputee like three days ago. Um, I have, you know, a lot happening on a daily basis. And so I'm in the trenches. I'm in the thick of it. I'm handling what I have to handle, but then there are the other trenches. And if you've ever been in love with somebody that's from them or you've been in them, that's another level of responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's another level of stress. So that's why when I was telling Pharrell, I, I'm okay with not being accepted in places where Hollywood things are the only things that happen because I'm a real human being. And I said, I'd really rather be in the trenches. And he kind of stopped me and made me repeat it. And he was like, that's it. That's the name. And, and, and sometimes when it comes organically like that and you're not sitting there saying, well, what shall we name this? Or right. well, what should, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the name? It kind of happens on its own. That's, the that's best. when it really does. It, it really does feel different and it's more easily understood by people that are in the trenches every day, going through it every day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then you premiered trenches uh, during verses, of course. Mm -hmm. And let me just say as a little black girl, I'm so glad that you did verses. Thank you so much because I literally was sitting there like, oh my God, I look. Actually, you made me, you reminded me that I was on punishment a lot growing up because of my mouth and I didn't do nothing but stay in my room and sing, um, Brandy and Monica. Um, but at the same time, you uh, inspired my podcast title, which was Black Women Were Better Together. And it was basically just saying, like, because I think a lot of people was, um, you know, misread things or, you know, took what they took from it. But at the end of the day, what my pod was saying was, you know, it doesn't matter if you're the same type of chick or not. At the end, we can make history. We can do something amazing together. And we're just better together, period. Um, doing verses, I know before people were asking, will you do it? Will you do it? And how was it leaving? Like, after it was done, it was like, I'm glad I did that. Now y'all have to stop asking me. You know? <laughs> but, <laughs> was that the feeling? But she, made, but she made it clear. We ain't no group. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I oh I always say that to her. I always joke with her about that because usually when people speak to one of us, they ask the other one about, about if they're talking to right. her, they'll ask her about me. If they're talking to me, they'll ask me about her. And that typically right. does happen with a group. So that's been like my running joke with her. But it's funny <laughs> because you have to be and you know what? I'm not going to censor who I am or pretend. What you saw on camera was our first time being in the same room in eight years. Wow. We had not had any conversation other than the conversations that people had had about us. And, you know, she really came on her grown woman and she really, she apologized um, even about just things maybe she put on social and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And we had a real heart to heart. So a lot of what people thought they saw during verses was really misinterpreted. But mm -hmm. I think that it was because they were already looking for so much yeah, that yeah. everything looked like a thing. And we just kind of laugh at it. We it laugh did. at it and keep moving because <laughs> I am a straight shooter. I am a person that I say what I feel and I say what's on my heart. But I think even what she'll tell me she appreciates about that is that she doesn't have to guess with me. You yeah. know, it's it's really straightforward. And so it was a, a great door opening moment for us to do it. And when Versus was over, I really felt like, I said, we should have let people see what was happening off camera oh, when it was okay. over. Because the way we were just vibing and talking about other stuff and me playing my new music <clears throat> and her telling me what she's doing next, you didn't get to see that. You saw very yeah. structured moments. And so people were trying to read body language and right. ooh, she put up Look how she turned her head. I my in the air. Yeah, yeah. you can't. And, and, and like I said, you, you, you my homie in real life. So I, like, it definitely was some moments where it was like, I felt like it was a little shade or like, and, and I, guess because, I guess, because, no, not in the, I guess because I know you, she would say something and you would like say something back, but you would be so like assertive about it. Like, nah, like it, it was just a. Think, a oh, you might, the only thing I can think you're talking about is like the kick door thing. I really, I knew she was joking, but I didn't know if other people were going to know right. she was joking. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wait, I don't want these people thinking I pulled a kick door on you. Right, like, right, wait, right, right, right. You know, so Absolutely. maybe, right. maybe my face changed in that because she definitely is, you know, she, she's humorous. You know, yeah. she and I didn't want it to be, oh my God, Monica pulled the like, kick door on. Right. Like what? You know? Yeah. Yeah, like a, a, a so small, glad a small it, discrepancy at rehearsal was not a kick door. Like, wait, you know, and then too, I think people forget 
that we were young. We were what, 18 and 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And so now at 40 and 41, you just don't view things the same. And there never right. was a boy. We right. never liked the same type of men or anything remotely close. I'm glad you it was a up. song. Right. Yeah, but you know, that song, I, I always tell people to be careful. Um, the tongue is beyond powerful. <laughs> and now so are the fingers because we're typing the things that we think. And a lot of the complexities you see between artists really isn't between them, but it can become a real thing. Yeah. And that's what happened to us back in the day. But I'm really, really glad that I did verses. And I am the type of person that you can read a lot of what I feel and a lot of what I felt was almost not just being guarded for just myself, but even for the both of us, because I initially said no to verses because I didn't want the whole pot stirring of, yeah. they don't like each other. They can't be in the same room. Yeah. I read stuff like they're gonna need a referee and yeah. I was just like, what? We were just in each other's dressing rooms and, you know, our kids are back back there and what like, but that's the part of it. It kind of comes with the territory, you know, once yeah. the narrative changes, you lose control over it. So we have to stay focused on the goal. And that was just for people to see us together. Only part that I'm, I'm so glad y'all did it. A little disappointed, I'll be honest. I, I wanted more singing. Like y'all played a record. So you wanted an unplugged concert and that's not what Versus is. Oh, I, keep, man. I keep telling people that's not what it is. Now, I love what the great aunties did. Right. Um, Auntie Patty. They sang. Yeah. Auntie okay. Gladys, they came and they probably were like, because I was told repetitively not to sing. I was told okay. repetitively to play the music so that we could stay on a certain time frame. You all have 20 oh. songs a piece, but people would never know that, you know. But you, um, we were told to play 20 songs a piece. Oh. We picked those out. And then she and I would just kind of stand on the side, like, yeah, I have these songs, you know, and I have these songs. We did not have a conversation before that very day. And so, oh. you know, I would love for it to be like a real concert because I would have had my band lives right in Atlanta and we did verses in Atlanta. I've never not been ready, willing or anxious to sing. That's the story of my life. I'm yeah, so glad like, you said that. Because <laughs> we were yeah, like, like I, I, I'm not trying never, to say why. <laughs> I, I, I would I would I would have loved to just go ahead or even have like an acoustic moment on a couple of songs, but we had so many songs and we had so much um that we had to remember what song is next. What are we gonna do? You know, it was a lot yeah. of that. So we were just having playful moments in between. And every time I would start singing something, I would think about it like, okay, Monica, now. They said, don't sing. Don't start so, jumping up, going crazy. So not that they were trying to control you like, you better not. But th just yeah. reminding us that this is how Reduction. long we have the slots. And then we had a surprise Kamala Harris called in, yeah, of which was so important. But we didn't know that that was happening until right before it happened. Wow. So I went from I saw thinking that, about... Like, six I saw that like 68,000 people signed up to register to vote after that, um, just with the influence of your oh. verses, with the engagement that, that when that happened, that's amazing. Yeah. That was that was really the goal. We were trying to get people to, um, and I thought it was genius of Apple to even surprise us like that. You know, that's a party that we both really support. So for them to surprise us like that was dope. But then it put on your radar, like what we wanted to tell people about them voting and letting them know that when they buy the Brandy Monica merch, that that's what it goes towards. We didn't want nothing. We didn't, we, we weren't, this wasn't about money for us at all. Being there wasn't, the merch wasn't, none of it. So, you know, we okay. had a lot on our plate. So we had business hats on, trying to adjust in the room. It was it was a lot of different things, but I'm glad it happened that way so people could see the authenticity of how it really goes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would not have wanted it to, um, I wouldn't have wanted it to be any other way because if you put yourself in our shoes, that was our first time in the room. Yeah. Eight years is a long time in this business when people have discussed what it should be, could be, or has been. So it was cool for us to put a lot to bed, but it opened some good doors. And we got people to think about voting at the same time, because I don't think people realize the importance. I'm having more and more people tell me I've never voted and they're older well, than let's I do it. Woo let's so, get it done. I think we're so glad you definitely cleared that up. Cause that's, that's one thing that a lot of people were saying about the not singing part. And I'm so glad you cleared it up, but also just in, in, in reference to voting, 
Um, so many people, it's their first time voting. It's their first time voting, but I still hear a lot of people saying, I'm, I'm not voting because I'm afraid my vote doesn't matter. I hear that every single day. Uh, like, what would Monica say to somebody who's watching or listening on the radio right now who thinks that, okay, uh, all that stuff is cool, but my vote doesn't count. It doesn't matter. What would you say? You're going to miss 100% of the shots you don't take. It's, it's, it's that simple. It's, you can use analogies from music, sports, anything else. But what's more important than the people that represent you? If you can't speak for yourself, then in masses with us voting, we get someone that speaks for us. Yes. The party that does not speak for you, you do not vote for. It really is that simple. And um, I, I don't understand the idea of I'm not going to vote, but right. I have compassion for it and I can explain why it's so important. If we don't get out here and start choosing, and I'm not just talking about the president, voting for who represents your city and your state is also imperative too. all your officials because when you have, like myself, uh, family members that are incarcerated, wrongfully convicted, you're talking prison reform, you can't talk that if you don't vote. You can't talk what's happening in school systems if you don't vote. You can't talk what's happening just, just in your communities if you're not voting because you're not implementing a right that our people, especially our people, really fought for. You're not, why did they fight right. if we're not going to vote? So the fight was for us to have a say. That's exactly what it meant. That's what our mm -hmm. grandparents were marching and, and risking their lives for. So that you had a say. And the more of us that have a say, then the louder we're speaking. Because it does take, you know, it takes all of us. And I think when one or two sit out, if you imagine that in every city and every state, what that ends up meaning, it's really gonna be traumatic for us if we don't get out and vote. Everyone in the house that's 18 years or older should be out at the polls. Take mm -hmm. them with you. You can do it as a family. We did it as a family um, the, the very last time. We went as a family. My brother, my mother, myself, all of us got together and we went and we did it uh, in the city I'm from. So that's important. I mean, mm -hmm. you do what you got to do to get the results that you need. And if you don't do it for yourself, do it for your kids. If you don't have kids, you got nieces, nephews, people that are growing up. We're having to teach them what the the proper protocol should be and how they should speak and what happens if they're pulled over by police and these are all things that could possibly help change that and if it doesn't then we know we've done our part and we have to do more not do less i don't i, I really don't get it we cannot do less and ask for more you could absolutely right <laughs> right is there anything uh, right now that we could do as fans to help when it comes to prison reform, when it comes to see murder? Is there anything that we can do or that we should be looking out? Any petitions that we can sign? Any merch we could buy? What's going on with that? Yeah, actually, his daughters um, have created his merch and they actually created the petition. Um, okay. He has a representation. Um, he has a lawyer, and we were very fortunate when Kim agreed to participate along with Jessica and Aaron. So for him to have a team is really important yeah. and to push for his freedom. I'm reading more about people like Geronimo Pratt and mm -hmm. learning more about um, Ruben Hurricane or, you know, people that have also experienced the same thing. So the knowledge is going to be key, I'm sure, in this case as well after mm -hmm. so long. But you can definitely, um, at Alexis Chelsea and um, Shay and Co., all of them have pages and you can kind of go to theirs and support his movement, sign the petition and buy the merch. It's something that they just did as their daughters because, as his daughters, because for 19 years that's where they've had to see their father so yeah you know it's it, yeah. it's really dope that there's been a, a an outpouring of support for him because the evidence really yeah. speaks for itself you know yeah. no one's pretending you know that he fell from the heavens with wings on we're saying that right. he did not commit this crime right and there are so many people like that and so many people that he's already advocating for that are some incarcerated with him some that have written him that are going through the same thing and the evidence is so overwhelming yeah. so definitely I believe we can get it done yeah, I, I believe, I believe it. in it I believe mm -hmm. in it you know I definitely do and I'm praying for the people that experience it that don't have teams that don't have helps yeah. help you know that don't have help right you know nearby that they can reach out to because yeah. 
they could spend their lives there. Big facts, man. Keep hashtagging mm -hmm. free seed murder. Um, they're giving us the wrap up signal in a second, but of course, yeah. Love the album. When is the album coming? Right now, we're playing Tristan's featuring Lil Baby. Tell us about the album. When can we expect the album? The album, you know, I'm wrapping up. Um, I've been in the studio with Missy for the last few nights, and um, new Monica, new Monica. <laughs> yes, you I know hear she's it. saying it. When you hear people, that, so weird. Rap. People were like, if she don't say new Monica, we don't want it. We don't I was want like, it. <laughs> We need I was that. like, no, she's definitely saying it louder than ever. And depending on the tempo of the record, she may switch it up a little bit, but she says it. Um, I'm wrapping up with her. The records with Neptunes are done. Um, I really wanted to work with London on the track and Rico Love. And we've been trying to go ahead and, and wrap that up. But I'm not going to still be saying it's on the way next year. I'm going to make okay. sure the album drops this year. Gotcha. I promise. This year. Yeah. I promise. They less, we love you. We love you. Uh, kudos to the kids. Hopefully, uh, um, the kid feels better than one with the strep throat. Let's yeah, hopefully better. Hopefully. She Thank said it's, it's getting better, but it's, it's slow. Better. You guys, please make sure you take care of yourselves, Thank socially you. distance, wear your mask. Peace. I mean, it, it helps even with the other things like strep or just common yeah. colds. Do what we got to do so that we can all be healthy and still be here to vote and get my album. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Both of them. Vote and get her out. That's the only thing I'm going to do in the fourth quarter. Yep. <laughs> thank you so much, Monica. We love you so much. Love you. I love y'all. Really and thank you for you. always supporting me. Listen, I don't take it for granted. Thank you for mm -hmm. always supporting me. Miss I'll Luke. be coming that way when it's allowed. I already know. Come so on. Our fellow, our fellow Scorpios, you know it's our season coming up soon. <laughs> yes, coming it's that time. Soon. Coming up soon. Halloween season right into November. You know how we get down every year. Uh, her, you know, uh, Ashley and I are about to start turning up these ideas, baby. Halloween is, that's that's one of my favorite times of year, very I oddly. I know, trust yeah. me. Yeah. You told me about that. So thank you so much, Monica, for checking in. We'll definitely thank be in touch. You. Uh, and I got your Fun Time Miles merch on the way as well. So thank you. All right. Thank y'all. Bye. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>